take a look at these two pieces of code. Can you find the mistake that's being made here? If you can't find the mistake, don't worry, because in this video, I'm gonna show you seven mistakes that you need to stop making in your Spigot plugins. Let's start with mistake number one. This is called the Pyramid of Doom. The reason it's called that is because if you take the code and rotate it 90 degrees, it looks exactly like a pyramid. This code checks to see if the player interacts with an item that has the word diamond in the name, but you can see that's really hard to understand when the code is formatted using the Pyramid of Doom. When we bonk that Pyramid of Doom with a hammer, it comes out looking like this, which is a lot easier to understand. You can see exactly what we're checking for, and you can see the result in a very simple line-by-line -line fashion. Let's move on to mistake number two, which is putting all of your code or a large chunk of your code in a single file. You can see I've got this really, really long file here, and it's over 450 lines of code long. I wrote this years ago, and if I'm being honest, I have no idea about everything that's in this code today. The way to fix this is to break up your long file into multiple smaller files that are super easy to understand. That way you can open up a single file to understand a little piece of your code rather than opening up a giant 500 line of code long file and understanding exactly none of it. Our next mistake is really, really tiny, but it is such a giant mistake and it'll cause you a lot of problems in the future if you're not aware of it. This mistake happens when you make objects directly accessible from other classes. You can take a look at this example here where I have a map of a player to integer, which counts the number of kills a player has gotten. I've made this map public, which means that any other class can access its data and manipulate it any way it wants to. And this is really bad because we can accidentally write code that changes this map outside of the one class here called direct access. And so we don't know exactly what's going on with our map when it's being changed. And it's really hard to keep track of all those different endpoints. It's much better to make your maps or other objects private and let different methods on your class interact with its own objects. If you reformat your code this way, you only have to change what's inside these methods rather than everywhere you interact with the map or other object directly. So I highly recommend you interact with your code this way. Our next mistake is a big one that you've definitely made when writing Spigot plugins. And that mistake is abusing the static keyword in Java. When writing code, using the static keyword means you can access different parts of data from anywhere in your project. That sounds really great and helpful, but it actually makes code harder to fix and harder to write more onto. Most people don't understand how to use the static keyword. Let me show you an example of how not to do it. I've written a static abuse plugin here that has an instance of itself that's set up in on enable. And I have this other static class called example manager with a method called do something. If we take a look inside of example manager, you'll see it accesses the static abuse plugins instance to grab the name of the plugin. This isn't good because it's unclear about how the example manager class interacts with the rest of our project. So let's go ahead and fix that up. This is the new version of our static abuse plugin where we have an example manager object. And when we make it, we pass in the name of the plugin. So it's very clear what the example manager uses from our project. This is a pattern called dependency injection. And all that really means is you can pass in those variables and then it uses those in whatever way it wants to, but it does need to access things from other static places. And it's very clear about what this class is actually doing under the hood. You can even pass an entire instance of your plugin in here if you wanted to, but I wouldn't exactly recommend that all the time either, unless you know you need a bunch of different things from that plugin object. The fifth mistake is repeating your code over and over and over. Take a look at this example. I've got a few different event listeners and a command that all give a player the same amount of items and do the same exact process. And if I wanna change what happens in each of these events, I'll have to change it in three different places. Fixing this is super simple. You just make a method with the duplicated code and have your other functions call that new method. And just like that, you only have to change one method to have a different result in your plugin. Let's move on to mistake number seven, which is what can happen when you don't make your own custom objects when you're writing your plugins. This plugin here synchronizes the Minecraft world border across all of the different worlds on a server. And while the code to do that is pretty solid, it's all taking place inside of the main plugin class. And this can get really confusing because it means that the main plugin is now handling this world border. And if we ever wanted to add more features to this plugin, it would start to get really messy and our main class would do a bunch of different unrelated tasks. The better way to do this would be to create a synchronized world border class or object that handles all of that world border sync. Here's our main class again, but this time you can see we create a new world border object and then call the methods on that to manage the world border. This means our main class doesn't have to handle anything and our synchronized world border class knows exactly how to manage the world border and all of the little nitty gritty details that go on with that. And this is great because it means our world border class does exactly one thing, which is manage that world border. It's generally good practice to make your classes do one specific thing and make them do that thing really well. Finally, let's talk about mistake number seven, which is not ever improving from the code 
code and mistakes you make in other projects. All you have to do to fix this mistake is look at some of your old code and figure out exactly what mistakes you're making and how you could make it better. And I promise whatever level you're at, you are absolutely making at least a few mistakes in every project you work on. This is because programming is a continuous learning experience and there's always something better you can do with your code. Every single time I make a project, there's always something I try and do better from my previous project or plugin. And I do this outside of just plugins as well. I do this every single time I work on any programming project at all. And that is mistake number seven. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. If you wanna watch a video from me right now, I've got this one over here where I looked at some of my oldest projects. Try and see if you can spot some of the mistakes I made in those projects by watching the video right here.